share a little bit more. I want to get a little bit more specific about what you guys are doing differently with your H2A, right? Because you guys are, let's call it, I mean, you guys are more socially conscious. You are a little bit, you're in a different, you're in a different mindset than a lot of companies. So can you get into details a little bit about how you kind of customize, I guess, for lack of a better word, you know, what you guys are doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. We, well, we're, tr- we try, right? Like it's, this is a, this is a humbling industry. So oh, for it's sure. A, every, it's an hourly, daily, weekly battle to just try to do, do better. And we're always just focused on, we focus on, we, we want to treat all of our uh, team members, employees as professionals. And um, so we try to give a lot up front. Um, we do um, an extensive amount of onboarding training right off the bat so people understand who we are, what this job is, um, and what our expectations are, and what are we going to give them in order to help them meet those expectations, and what's right. our part of the deal. Um, I think, So philosophically, I think we, we blink first, right? We're, we'll make the first investment, and then down the road, we can say, look, we can, we can have higher expectations, but you kind of got to give first, I think, in this world. So Love that. Today, um, it, 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 that means embracing our responsibility to this workforce who is here away from home, maybe not having traveled outside of their home community or their city or their state or their area, you know, very much, if at all. Now, some people have been, you know, it depends, right? Some people have been, oh, my eighth year on contracts, okay. But many people have not. So they're here away from home, right? They don't have a doctor. They don't have uh, their family network that they may be used to having. They're, they're here with us potentially for a long period of time. I mean, the Selena season is eight months. Right. Well, it's a long time to be away from home and you're living in a group environment. We have low density housing, um, but you're still living with, you know, five, six, seven other people in an apartment, right? Where you, you, that's a shared living environment. You're 24 seven with your right. workmates, you're riding with them, you're living with them, you're with them every day. It's not for everybody. So we, with Sierra, our partner on recruiting, we spend a lot of time, first of all, on smart recruitment, trying to find people who are mentally and emotionally, as well as from a work skills perspective, prepared to come do what we're going to need to do. So right. from, from the very first interview, um, we're reinforcing, look, um, this is not for everybody. Here's what you can expect with us. Mm-hmm. Here's what we give and here's what we expect in return, right? We need to deliver for our customers because we are a higher cost operator. We have nice housing. We're going to make sure all your expenses get paid. Um, that should be a baseline, but it's not. Um, we, we try to provide all kinds of additional services and benefits, right? We have a consi- all the stuff that we can go through this list of all the things we're going to give you. But, you know, we need you to know you got to come up here and be ready to work because we're going to pay you a high wage, right? The wage for H2A this year in California is $16 and five cents an hour. Right. And then we're charging also the customer for all that recruiting stuff that we do, which is more expensive because we do it right. Mm -hmm. And the housing, which is more expensive because it's nice and we cram less people. Right. So um, all that means we are more expensive. So we need to do we need to be smarter. We need to be better. We need to be more efficient so that we can overcome that cost disadvantage. And we'll, I will talk about a little bit about that later, but um, w- so we try to really embrace this relationship right. with employees, try to get to know everybody, try to help them understand, look, you've got multiple people to talk to here. There never needs to be a problem where you have a concern that you don't feel you can bring up. Talk to right. your you don't feel comfortable with your four person. You got a supervisor. You got HR people that are riding around all the time. You got me out in the field. You got our HR director. We're all present and we're wandering and we want to encourage open door, right? There's not going to be retaliation. We want to know about issues. So we try to reinforce that from the start. Um, and it's very challenging, right? That kind of cultural shift. That's not what we're all used to really mm-hmm. necessarily in this industry. A lot of people in the H2A program, especially are coming from, um, an environment where they, I mean, they're, they're going to come here and make $16 and five cents an hour. Right. 
they might be, if they're lucky, if they're working in a good job north, like in the northern area of Mexico on, on, on a border farm, they may be making $16 an hour a day. I right. Know. I think I, like, it's like roughly, right? Like, so the, and then if you, the more you go into interior Mexico or other locations, that the, the disparity is even more. So the economic opportunity is enormous. So then the, the tendency to just keep my head down and I'm not going to say anything that's going to jeopardize this. What I have. I'll right. put up with anything because I'm not, because I got to get that 1605 an hour. I just got to, well, that's not what we want, right? We want, we want people to be able to raise their hand. Correct. Say, this happened, that happened, but that's a difficult thing to get through. So we have to just kind of understand. And this, so I mean, it's daily for us. It's just learning. How can we be a responsible professional partner for these, for these professional agricultural workers that we're trying to, we're trying to create that, you know, that kind of that different, that different dynamic in the relationship. Right. Well, I love what you said, you know, about the fact that it is, you know, what you're doing does cost more. But again, it goes back to that positive cost of food. You are raising the bar for everybody. And I just commend you for it. Again, I think it's great. And, I, and it certainly comes with some risk, right? It's, you know, always the line leader always has a tendency to get the most bugs in the windshield, right? And, and that's a challenge. I know that for a fact. And so with what you just said, you know, and, and you're, you are making positive labor changes, right? And I want to go a little bit back into Certo a little bit, just ask the question, because they are helping you down there. They are kind of your, your face, voice, trying to move the ball for you guys. Has what, has what you're doing now changed them in the aspect of like, people are like, all of a sudden, hey, I want to go to these guys. Are you starting to see people shifting more towards trying to get to you now? Because the fact you've got this reputation for doing this right and treating people right and, and being completely transparent in your actions. Is it starting to see that, that positive uh, vibe yeah. coming back? Yeah. In the communities where we've worked now for a number of years and the places mm -hmm. where, where we're recruiting and people have come and gone back and come and gone back. Yeah. We're start, you start to get that word of mouth. I mean, that's how, and it happens locally as well. Right. So we right. still struggle mightily to maintain the local workforce. Um, we're always trying, but, but it is, we're starting to see that we're getting a little gravity, right? A little bit of a, a little bit of a gravitational pull that people want. We're starting to make some noise. You know, people are starting to understand who we are, how it is to work here. It's not for everybody because we are a pain in the ass with our compliance, right? People are not used to, um, especially independent operators, you get tractor drivers out there or irrigators out there kind of on their own. We make sure people take their breaks. We make sure people take their lunches. We make sure people are following tractor safety rules. We make sure people are following vehicle safety rules. We're doing, it's a lot. And pe they're not, people are not necessarily used to that. Even the, the worker themselves is not, it's in, in their interest, but it's not how we, it's not how it's been done. So it's new. Right. And, you know, here we are haranguing them for, hey, you missed your break. Nah, don't worry about it. It's my break. No, you have to take your break. It's we, part of the rules. Right. That's a liability for us. So we are rigid in our in our enforcement of compliance rules, and that makes us a difficult employer in some way. Even though it's in the interest of the workforce, it makes us hard to work for. And so well, we gotta, do, doing it right is never easy, right? You're and yeah, you're trying to change people. You know, right. you're trying to change so that paradigm. Communication also. Why are we so difficult? Look, here's how it works. Right. Not right. only can we be sued if you didn't take your break, we can't. Right. Uh, but but uh, these rules are here to protect you. This is why we are attempting to do all, all of this, right? right? So it's like, instead of just like, hey, write up because you missed your break. Yeah, it's going to be a disciplinary. But you, have to, you have to follow the rules. But here's why, again, let us reinforce. For sure. Why we're doing this. Um, so, so are you seeing better retention? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just said it's ongoing, ongoing attempt to develop the relationship where we all understand each other. Right, right, right. Are, are you seeing higher retention now in, in certain ways? We have good retention. Yeah, we yeah. do. We do. I, it's hard to measure because we're still so small, you know, and right. we have 200 people, you know, this year, which is, last year was brutal, right? Coronavirus, we lost a whole bunch of business leading up into the thing. And we kind of backed off some of it in March when it was like, we're all, you know, sanitizing our mail. We're like, oh, you know, maybe we don't want, this many people here under our control uh, and under our responsibility this year. So we kind of 
we let some contracts go away. So we were very small last year. We, our first year, this is only our third season. So right. you know, it's hard to have you know, stats, but we're starting to feel it. We feel the retention. We feel the draw. Um, and I feel like we're starting to get traction on that. We're also starting to get traction with customers who are seeing a little bit the value of what we do. Well, the reason I ask that, and it kind of leads me into my next question. It's like, so you have a worker come in, you have a guest worker come in, does their six months, 10 months, nine months, whatever the number is, and their contract expires, they've got to go back home, right? So because of how you're, because of what you do and the training that you're giving them, because you really are giving them proper training on how to, you know, be an ag worker in the, in the, in the context of what the job is, are, and they, they, do they, from a retention standpoint, are you concerned about them going somewhere else? I mean, is that a tendency that can happen? You know, they go down and all of a sudden somebody else is trying to go after them? Or are you seeing like, hey, you know, and again, it's only three years old, but these guys are signing right back up again because the experience was so good. Mostly we see people want to sign back up with us. I mean, we haven't right. seen people voluntarily really move on. I mean, again, it's, you know, limited, we have limited data, but for the most part, if somebody's been up here and worked with us, and if it's not for, you know, family reasons that they're not going to come back on another contract or some you know, various things happen, if, if they want to come do another H2A contract, I think we feel people mostly want to come back with us. Right. I don't um, think it's like the old, uh, it was like a cartoon, you know, like the CFO says, what if we spend all this money training all these people and they leave? And the CEO says, well, what if we don't and they stay? You know, it's like, right. we have to do this to do what we do. And you just have to commit and, and, and try to be hitting the, what, what's valuable to the employer, right? It's not what I think is valuable. We have to be in communication enough so that we know what truly is valuable um, to, to our workforce so that we can re- put the right retention measures in play, right? So they really want to come back. Um, right, right. I think we're finding it, but it's that, that also is just a work in progress. Sure. So uh, let's, I'm going to ask a hundred dollar question, right? I, and this is kind of drawing you into this one, but I know you're young, but I, I, you've got to be at the point now where you can probably start to measure the impact that you're having on businesses' bottom line, whether it be from production standpoint, you know, these, these, these folks are happier, they're being treated better, and naturally these a happier employee is going to lead to better production. It's just math, right? Do you have some stats that are backing that up now, or at least we do, yeah. Examples? This year. Yeah, finally, we, yeah, we are seeing it this year. Um, and the way we measure it is um, that, you know, we, we're higher costs, as I explained earlier. First of all, we're paying, sure. we're paying the H-2A wage. And then we pay housing, we pay the recruiting, and the grower pays all that. So our customer pays all of that. So we are, roughly speaking, we're you know charging people between twenty-seven and thirty bucks an hour by the time right. it's all done uh, for H two A. Whereas um, some of our competition out here is somewhat these old school uh, you know labor contractors kind of. Um, you know, paying minimum wage to, to, to local people that have, you know, 10 people, 20, they got nine today, they got 20 tomorrow. It's very inconsistent, but that's, that's kind of the, that's kind of the alternative. It's kind of us right. or, or that. And obviously that's a cheaper by the hour solution, but what we do is measure when we're doing, we do a lot of acre work. Um, we're not doing a ton of harvest yet, but you could either measure, you want to measure by the unit, right? Not by the hour. So right. Can we be more productive? And, and you know, cut to the answer. The answer is yes, we're seeing that this year we are able to actually be neck and neck with our local competitors on a cost per acre basis, despite wow. being more expensive on a cost per hour basis. Why? Because we come to the work site organized, efficient. We know where we're going. We know what we're doing. Um, the team members are trained now. They're motivated to help us do what we're trying to do. Uh, and we are able to cover more acreage because we are using as much technology as we can. We are um, showing up with the right tools for the job, uh, all the little things. And then we have got a group that's well-recruited and right. understands the objectives and feels like they're part of the process. I think, I mean, putting words in their mouth, but I think that's, I mean, there's ultimately it comes down to the people wanting to get out there and do this work for eight hours a day, work hard for eight hours a day. Um, and that's, that's hard, right? But we're doing it. And so the data is starting to show that we can incur all these additional costs and we're out there 
neck and neck with the guys who are paying minimum wage and not doing any of the stuff that we do. So, so if you take care of people, they're going to do better. Wow. That just seems like such exactly. hard math. It's limited. I mean, hey, I'm not, I'm not here to, um, you know, uh, claim mission accomplished or anything yet, you know, but we're just starting to see it, but that's the, that's the bet that we've made that we can do that. And it's gratifying that this year, finally with some scale, finally with some experience under our belt, we're starting to see, Hey, Hey, look, it, it actually it's, works. It's working. And you know, it's, it's, it's every day we're out there trying to, trying to make it work, but, but, but it's, but it's working, right. It's a million things. It's Sierto's job, helping us find really good people to start sure. with. It's, it's our job putting together the right packages of you know, the right housing, helping to make sure. And then it's every day, it's our four people understanding it's on its hour, trying to invest in our four people and in our supervisors so that they know how to do their math, right? What's the, what's the grower's expectation for a budget on this particular crop uh, organically or conventionally? And what does that mean? How much do we, right? They have an eight per acre budget perhaps. And we know how much we cost per hour. So you got 10 acres here. How many hours can you spend in this field to hit their budget? Are you going to be on it? What's your estimate? You get there, walk to, what's your estimate? And what, you know, all these sort of all those things we can do to try to train ourselves to be a better service provider to the grower and then right. be smart about how we hit that number. Right. You know? Well, yeah, you know, dude, it, you said something. You said, you know, it's not mission accomplished, but I think it's conversation started. Yeah. Right. I mean, because you're not going to get to the end of the line until we start at the beginning. Right. And, and, and you're and you're you're raising the bar. And, and in this forum, like we're doing right now, I think a lot of people are going to be blown away. Right. I know I am. I mean, I'm incredibly impressed. But again, it's it's somebody's going to have to take the lead on ag labor and start these conversations. We're going to have to start to fix some of these things. We can't keep putting off border problems and security and all these other things that we talk about. We just can't keep talking about. We've got to start solving some of these just like you're doing. So again, I commend right. you for taking on the challenge. On the, on the productivity piece, you know, there's a lot of that conversation about ag tech, right? And automation, mechanization, all this stuff. It's all happening. Sure. Um, and so we're, we need to be part of, of that. Right? It's all about being smart with how we're going to do this work moving forward. So we're focused on embracing Right. We're using a digital timekeeping system, which is not, not nothing new. A lot of companies no. use it. The way if you can capture your data and then you can figure out how to pull data in from different places and convert that into a real-time analysis for a customer so they know, hey, where am I running on this crop? Where am I running on this ranch? What's my average? What are my trends? What All this different stuff that we can sort of hear from them. Hey, what's valuable? Okay, we got that data. Right. We can figure out how to convert that for you. Um, is one thing I try to embrace as much, be as, be as uh, forward thinking on it, figuring out how to use technology to get smarter. Um, that's just, that's like a reporting and an analytics sure. that we employ, which has appeared to be, has, has turned into a really valuable thing for our customers, right? So we know what we're doing. We can also offer a service. We say, like, give us all your data. We'll run all this, all right, 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 like right, in, in what we're doing, right? We might be a portion of your labor supply. You might have other providers. You might have your own people. You want to share some data. We'll happy to run all these reports for you. Otherwise, we'll just run them for our people, and you can compare whatever you want to do. But wow. that is, that's something that you know we can embrace. We're also uh, working on some hybridized, you know, labor and embracing some of the automation that in the in the areas where we're working and the, mm -hmm. the functions that we're doing. Where we can figure out, look, this thing's not quite there enough. It's not like it's like set it up and the robot does the thing, right? right. Pull around it all, uh, and sometimes what the what the what the equipment can do to start is reduce the labor cost, right? But then you figure out, well, what fields can this thing work in? What field conditions? What right. are you good at? Is it better, you know, is it better in this condition or that? So let's deploy that and then we'll send a crew in and we'll maybe be able to average down a weeding bill, you know, because we put an auto weeder in that was able to do a good job on that particular crop configuration. And then we come through and spend half the money on labor. Perfect, right? That's, right. that's a win for us because it's a win for our customer. Um, right. And that's kind of where, so we're trying to be in that, that hybrid space also where the, all this stuff is coming. We're not just sitting here a lot of, you know, labor is not just a passive, with us, it's not just a passive headcount business. Right. We're trying to be smart, help, help growers figure out 
how to compete um, because it's it's tough. You know, it's a it's a very difficult environment for California farmers, especially, to remain viable um, in competition with places outside in the United States that don't have any of the rules and regulations that California farmers have to fa- follow, let alone outside the country. Yeah, so I don't think people realize we have to figure out how to help them be smart with this workforce that we're trying to build. Yeah, I don't think people realize the rules and regulations and how hard it is to be a farmer in California. It is. Let me, it let me is. Say a couple of things real quick. Yeah, go. California minimum wage right now is $14 an hour. Next year, it's going to be $15. California is one of only five states in the United States where farm workers have a minimum wage. There are a lot of states where there may be a, 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 a state minimum, right? The, the, the federal minimum is 725. Right. But there states that have a state minimum, but they've excluded agriculture. California, $14 an hour next year is $50 an hour for everybody. Workers' compensation, California is required for all employers, everybody, every sector, everything, you work compensation. One of only 13 states in the country that requires that for agriculture. It's a major cost, probably our biggest cost after the payroll itself and the payroll taxes. Next in line for us is our workers' compensation bill. And somebody across the street, you know, next state over, a couple states over, does not have that expense. Overtime. In California right now, uh, next year, California will have, um, we're already, uh, California has a um, overtime rule, um, which basically kicks in at 40 hours for most office employees, most employees of most companies. Right. Agriculture has always had this exemption, which is being phased out. It's been being phased out over the last few years. So this year, and most agricultural workers under, under the, the wage cat, cat categorization uh, can work 45 hours a week or eight and a half right. hours a day. It's been coming down, down, down. Next year, we're eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, regular time hours. After that, it's OT, time and a half. And California is one of only two states, us and Washington, where agricultural workers are paid overtime at the same way that all the other employees in the state are without any exemptions. So those are just, let alone, right, then we have, we have California, Cal OSHA, our own OSHA here, which, right. and we have, uh, you know, all kinds of, right, sexual harassment training, man, all kinds of mandatory trainings that have to occur, which are all wonderful, right? I'm in favor, I'm in favor of all that stuff, right? Work conversation, hell yes. Sure. Also, uh, minimum wage, yeah. Overtime, fine, right? It makes sense. The problem is nobody else has to do it. Right. Well, it's not a level playing field. And no grower gets uh, anything extra for being Calif. It's not California grown. Oh, great. You know, like, oh, I'm going to pay more. Right? I know this from my buyer, right? I didn't know anything when I was in the other seat. But now I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, wow, you know, like these, these California, nobody gets paid more in the market for it being California. They don't know this stuff, right? right. Some other state, none of that stuff's in place. You don't know the difference. Well, it, you know, it goes back to what I said earlier. It's a positive cost of food. People need to understand, you know, as we live in a world where the, the, the biggest narrative is get cheaper, not get better when it comes to our food. Um, we've got to change that, right? These conversations like we're having today hopefully start to change people's perception and go, we need to understand how do we help these growers keep going? Because we've got to have them, you know, grower, we're not, we're not adding, we're not adding enough growers to the pool anymore, right? Growers are going the opposite direction the, the second generation, third generation folks, they're bailing, right? It's going to become tougher and tougher. And you know, not even talking about water, Labor and water, right? I mean, people are like either people are shifting, shifting what they're growing, or, or stopping, stopping it altogether. Correct. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. One of the things too, I just wanted to touch on real briefly um, that I thought was really cool that you guys do is that I know you have like your consulting side. Like you guys are actually willing to go help other people get better. Your competitors, your direct competitors. I mean, you're willing to have those conversations. Yeah. That's, yeah. But again, raise the bar. Yeah, well, I think to the extent that we, I mean, it's not all altruistic too. I mean, to the extent that we have some experience that's worth something um, to other people and we can help them do better, that doesn't hurt us. And it helps, you know, if we can get some consulting fees in here to help offset some of our 
overhead because we overinvest, right? We're over invested in our administrative operation because you got to have good HR. You have to have good payroll right. systems in order to do all the stuff well. You got to have all the stuff. It's one of the places that companies go wrong. A lot of ad companies, right? Like your HR, like your HR person is just your payroll, you know, like your payroll expert. And they're right. like, oh, you're HR too. And right. it's like, man, you know, that's when we started, I started Ag Socio, our first hire was a highly experienced HR safety and training person who is, you know, now a, a, a partner in Ag Socio and is our, our director of, of, of human resources, but that's so critical, right? You've got to absolutely. You got to know not only the rules, but you got to try to know the best practices because that's how you're going to extract some value out of all the stuff that we're doing. Right. I love it, dude. I got to tell you, I mean, it's this is a very cool conversation, and what you guys are doing is impressive. And one of the reasons I, you know, was beating down your door to get you here is because what you're doing needs to be uplifted. It needs to be thought through. It needs to become a more consistent part of making this place a better place for everybody, right? Because we're not going to, we're not going to do it by, we're not going to do it by being in separated pods of people and ideals and all this other stuff. We need to be coming together. And I can't think of a better place to come together than food, because unless somebody comes up with a way of not surviving or surviving without food, I think we should probably lean into it a little bit more and basically get our shit together. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, so, and, and let me just, can I, can I, can I, make yeah. a- uh, a pitch Go. to your audience, you know, I mean, to the knowing that you're going to have uh, influential buyers and uh, brands, right? People who are not, people who are a couple layers up in the supply chain listening, right? To the people, if you think you're, pay attention to where the labor is coming from. I mean, I, I, I honestly, the reason I, mean, I got involved with Sierra to begin with and then started this, we as an industry are heading into right h2a is growing leaps and bounds because there's the demand right you, you have to have people to do this work that's right. the only alternative right assuming there's not going to be immigration reform coming down from on high anytime soon which you know we can all we can all hope uh but failing that it's h2a and right because even even there's a great piece of legislation that's that passed the U.S. House of Representatives is sitting in the Senate now. It's called the Farm Workforce Modernization Act. Right. It's a wonderful thing. It's a. It's been negotiated by employers and labor advocates together. Everybody gave a little something. It's been by. Bi- it's bipartisan, and uh, and it's, and from the industry side, it's got all different kinds of people supporting it. It provides a pathway over time to legalize it to a legal status for people who have worked in agriculture and will commit to work to ag- in agriculture for a period of time in the future. So we can take this workforce, which provides so much value, which feeds us and has fed us for generations and help them come out of the shadows. They're in the workforce. They're doing this work. But right. They're the and they're therefore exposed to all sorts of exploitation uh, because they're vulnerable. Um, we, can, we can bring them out of the shadows with this bill, would give them sort of that pathway. It also does some really important H2A reforms, which employers desperately need in order to make this program work a bit better. So there's something for everybody in this bill and it needs to pass, but that's not gonna solve the labor problem. All that does is take the existing workforce and um, help them avoid, you know, uh, right. being driving to work in the morning, but th- it doesn't create new workers, right? The new workers are only right now in the guest worker program. And right. th- the industry's blind to it, basically. The risks that come with any kind of international recruitment program like that, especially where there is a lack of transparency, there's a lack of accountability in the whole supply chain that goes and feeds those workers in to the system. Right. Even, a, even an employer who, like, like us, working with some other kind of recruiter that's not Cierto, you would not have any idea what's happening down there. Um, there are all kinds of levels of intermediaries and outsourcing that occurs. And um, there's a lot of exposure there and there's a lot of bleeding of the system, right? If you have somebody coming up here and make $16 and five cents an hour, but they've had to take out a loan in order to pay, to get up here to anything from the most casual, uh, right. you know, somebody charged somebody for some copies cause they're a little, you know, opportunistic to deliberate fee charging, then they're not really making 1605. Oh. 
they're making something else and they're not really working for you. They're not going to raise their hand when they have a problem because they got something they got to pay back back home. They're going to have their head down and that doesn't serve anybody. Right. So oh. it's a whole, uh, I would say to the supply chain, pay attention to this and do your due diligence on your labor supply chain because demand from the top is the way that positive practices will get pulled up through the system. For right? sure. What's going on with food safety? Nobody knows the depths of um, what's going on with labor. And, I, it, and there's risk for brands and retailers in that space, but more importantly, there's efficiency and, and positive gain to be had. Um, but it starts with doing due diligence and paying attention. Well said, Dad. Thank you for throwing that out there. I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad that sparked in the back of your brain. And you threw it forward. Well said. And I and I think it's super important that people that you're right that people start to realize change only happens if we want it to happen. Right? We can you can you can think about change all you want, but unless you take a step forward to make it happen, it's just a thought. Right? And so I appreciate you saying that. You know. You're a pretty inspiring guy. You always have been. But I mean, this is a big undertaking. Dude. I mean, this literally is a big undertaking. So let's get a little bit off of, of the labor thing for a second. But to ask, what's what inspires you, right? What what What's inspirational in your life? What gets you fired up? Honestly, I'm inspired by the people like in like just thinking work wise, like what's the drive here? I'm inspired. I have this this opportunity, right. To, to do something. I've, I've, I've got some amount of privilege that I can be in this position where I can start this company and do it a different way. Right. Not everybody can do that. So I, I'm inspired by the people that I work with every day who make all this food emerge and end up in these supermarkets. I mean, the amount of, I mean, it's just, it's amazing to me, the work ethic, that some people have to work, some people work hard for their money, just hard for their money. And I come right. from, I've always worked hard, but I'm like an honest guy, right? Like I grew up in suburban New Jersey. It's different. Getting, you know, the, our vans are leaving our housing at five o'clock in the morning right now because we're trying to get ahead of heat. So people are getting out at 4.30, five o'clock in the morning, working all day, and our drivers and four people, especially then they're coming back. They got their paperwork. They got all their stuff to do. I mean, it's a 12 hour, 10 hour day. And then they get up and do it again the next day. And they do it for six days a week. And they do it all season long. Right. Um, after season after season for not a lot of money. And we need them. And so I'm inspired by the opportunity to just do a little better for them. You know, like, like on a hard day, it's just, I just got like a hard day in the office, whatever. I just go out, like, let's just go out and talk to people, you know, and, and that, and that, you know, that changes my attitude because I see why, you know, these are the people that, that deserve better and deserve more, deserve a bigger share of this, this supply chain, right? This, this, this lettuce that we're working on, that's going to get sold in a clamshell. Right. My employer for five bucks you know like how does that what's their share of that what should it really be and how can we try to move the needle that's what inspires me dude that's a hell of a good answer i'll take that one i want to ask another inspirational question i'm going to let that one go that wins <laughs> tell me something um tell me something you know give me a quote or something that you've learned i know you shared you shared this with me in, in the past and i just think it's a great one and i'd love for you to share kind of that that quote yeah i i think I, the one i shared with you was you'll get taller right uh, which is this i had my grandfather and my mother's father um we knew his gp grandpa uh in his the later years we called him gp i had a great relationship with him he was a great guy right he was from the greatest generation uh kind of guy they don't make him like they used to type right you know just head down all his life came from very little and, and made something of himself. And he, I, when I was at Earth University in the early, in the early days of that job, and we were shipping banana containers all over the place, trying to figure out how to be a banana exporter and importer and, you know, fresh produce and shipping and all this stuff. And, uh, yeah, we were losing containers to hurricanes and strikes, right. 
port wouldn't let him in and they're rotten and the whatever, right? Like over and over again. I'm getting yelled at by the guys I worked for in Costa Rica because, you know, another container lost $20,000. Oops, you know, and then Whole Foods, where's the bananas? You know, what's your problem? Why can't you guys deliver? You know, just common work stress, right? But that was very important to me. That was my thing, right? So I remember going to visit him. Um, or what would be the last time I, I got to speak with him? He was in his, in his um, assisted living place at that time. And I got to call my parents, hey, you need to come visit, um, you know, GP. So I, I got up there and he was kind of not, he wasn't really awake, right? But he was way awake. Oh, hi, how are you? And then he was kind of dripped out. Right. Talking to him and I was telling him this story about, you know, banana containers or whatever. He's always really interested in my work. And I remember telling him like, hey, you know, Gramps, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm underwater, but I'm like, you know, I'm feeling like the water's like right here. Right. I'm not sure if he's paying attention, you know? And this is after my whole long story. Like I just told, I probably twice as long as it. And, uh, and he just opened his eyes, you know, and said, you'll get taller. And for me, like, you know, you always get taller. So that, yeah. you know, that was for him, but first of all, the perfect memory for his supportive nature over his whole life. The fact that sure. whatever he was going through, whatever pain, whatever, you know, distractions he had, he was paying attention to every word I said, he didn't look like it. And he had the perfect thing to say. But also, you know, I always just remember, you know, you'll get taller. So that's killer. My, that's my inspiring. Uh, that's the thing I always reflect on when stuff gets stuff gets tough. Hard. Dude, that's killer. I love it. Right? Those guys, that generation was was for real. And and uh, you know, not that every generation doesn't have their problems, but but um, it seems a little different. And, yeah. You know, so so we we'll get taller. Dude, I love that. I think that's killer. I think that's that's the reason I asked you to tell the story because I think it's just fantastic. And I think it's so relevant too. I mean, you know, we, we get so overwhelmed at times and just something so simple, it's simple, but something so simple as that is like, yeah, yeah. that moment of pause, that moment of reflection. And you're right. I will get taller. Yeah. I love it. Dude, you want to have some fun? Want to play a little trivia? I mean, yeah. we're playing for literally at this point, the trivia jackpot is over $500 trillion. No, it's nothing. It's zero. You get nothing. Maybe a little bit of pride at the end if you get them right. So let's let's start let's start off with the first one. Let's start off with one that may potentially get you in trouble. This is the purpose of this one. First off, let me say congratulations on becoming a new dad. You have a newborn. Yeah. You're welcome. A little bit disappointed, you know. I try to throw out some name suggestions. We talked about this in detail, you know. I feel a little let down. You didn't go with Todd. But, you know, maybe you the kid will consideration, I'll tell you that. Well, and I appreciate that. And, and hopefully you'll have a good life not having that name. So let me ask the question. How much sleep did you get last night? I actually had a good night of sleep last night. Great. So here's the second part of the question. Oh, no, no, we're done. We're done. Here's the second part of the question. How much sleep did your wife get last night? She got even more. We, we got, <laughs> I, was on, I was on duty last night because he's been up a lot. And, uh, you know, try to, I'm, I'm here you know, during the day. So I, I took, I took night duty, but he slept on me. So I got, oh, I thought for sure I was going to get you under the bus. I thought for sure I had you on film captured that would just live in the ethos of it forever. Good Damn thing it. we didn't do this yesterday. Day late dollar short story of my life. Let me write that down over here again. So if you could have it, if you had a dinner party and you can invite one person to it, dead or alive, who would you invite? Barack Obama. That's a good answer. Well, it's okay. better alive. Jeez, uh, yeah, I'll still go. I'll still go Barack Obama. I think. Okay, okay. What uh, do you know? What the definition of uh, discodecophobia is? No, it's the fear of the number thirteen. Just thought I would throw that at you. Hmm. There you go. Now you know. Would you climb? Would you rather climb a mountain or jump out of a plane? I would rather jump out of a plane because I've never done it. That's a good answer. I was going to ask you why, but you never done it. So I like that. Good. That's wondering. a good answer. Well, yeah. So how, how about this one? If you can only eat one food forever, which one would you eat? Mm. Not that's think a tough about nutritional value. Oh, it's, that's out the um, Yeah. If you want to do deep fried butter, nobody's going to judge. Yeah, I would be uh, probably, oh, shoot. Um, I'm a pasta. I'm a pasta guy. So oh, like, this, what do I want to eat every day? That'll work. Yeah. Little pasta. That'll work. Dude, I got to tell you, um, I've known you a long time and you're a good guy. 
And what you're doing right now, in my mind, makes you even a better guy. You were taking on something that needs to be done. It needs to be talked about. You know, it, it, it's about starting the conversation. And I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, and I, and I think everybody that's listening to us as well, thank you. Thanks for raising the bar, right? Thanks for just taking the risk. You're taking a risk. You're sticking your neck out. And that's a tough thing to do. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Tom. I really do. Yeah, I got, I got just one final question I want to throw at you. If you could just say one thing about Ag Socio and the importance of Ag Labor and what you guys are doing, what would you say? Um, I would say that we're overdue to recognize the value of the agricultural workforce. I think lack of recognition of that has caused us a lot of the problems that we're having currently as an industry, as a country. Um, and we're just trying to um, make a little difference in our little corner. Um, and, you know, maybe one day be an example to others, but honestly, we're just trying to do our thing, trying to, trying to be a better employer, trying to be a good service provider to growers and let the rest of it take care of itself. Um, but I hope that people, you know, if there's any kind of takeaway, you know, um, it's that the agricultural workforce deserves better than we're giving them collectively. Right. And um, that, you know, as you always say, you know, a positive cost of food, everybody in the supply chain has a role to play in solving that problem because it's not going to start at the bottom up. And the growers, don't, you know, there's no space, right? That costs money to do it better. So the solution is difficult, but it needs to be found. I love it. Folks, Matt Rogers, that's why he's here. That's why we're doing this, because we need this kind of inspiration every day in our food world. We need to lift up the bar. Brother, I can't thank you enough for hanging out with me today. Thanks for not asking me about how I cut my, my finger uh, in that callow. Uh, Did I... I'm, I didn't. I thought about it. I was prepared to do it. I was. I thought throwing you under the bus with the wife was actually going to be more fun for me than that story. But you come back on. Let's do it. I'll tell that story. I'll All tell right. the story. You have Thank to receive me telling the story. Thank you for doing these, uh, these interviews. I've been enjoying listening to them, Todd. It's a great thing. I really appreciate it. And thanks Thank for you. inviting uh, us to participate. Dude, it's totally my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. We'll see you soon. Well, a huge shout out to Matt and the whole team at Ag Socio for what they're doing. Um, this conversation is real. This conversation is important. This is a conversation we need to keep having. He threw out a lot of things for us to consider, to, to ponder, to think about, to get involved with. So just one more time, a huge, huge thank you to him for taking the time to share with us. And I think informing us all a little bit more about the issue of ag labor and how real it is and an issue that it is that we need to embrace and we need to work on fixing. So thank you for being with us again today. Don't forget to check us out on uh, Instagram at TLC underscore Todd Versations. We're all over LinkedIn. Um, all of these will be on YouTube from the video version as well as the audio versions on all the uh, podcast sites, Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, the whole nine yards. Uh, our video versions have closed captions on them. So those of you that uh, are hearing impaired and want to be able to uh, to, to join us, please do flip the toggle on and you'll be able to uh, to listen right along with us or, and read right along with us as we're chatting. Um, we're really appreciative of you being here. Don't forget to uh, reach out to us. If you want to come on and share your story, we want to inspire people. We want to uplift brands. We want to champion people and causes. We want to make people understand that the, we got to work together to make a better solution to our food world and we can do it by conversation. So thank you again for being with us. And remember, go inspire somebody today. It by far will be the best thing you will do all day long. Thanks for being here. Be good. See ya. <laughs>